In this video, we'll be solving this practice question that uh, for some of you I've assigned as homework. Uh, for others, you're seeing it for the first time. If you are seeing this for the first time, I suggest pausing the video here and trying to solve all these questions before watching me uh, solve it. So here we've got a capital budgeting uh, situation. It's quite a lengthy one, so we're going to break it down in parts. Um, you can always skip ahead to the part you're most interested in, or uh, I recommend watching the video throughout. Let's talk about the first project. So Omega project uh, requires you to pay $500,000 up front, but then would return $150,000 in the first year, two hundred dollars the second year, $350,000 in the third year. However, in the third year, you're also going to have to pay $50,000 to dismantle the machines. In other words, you're going to have an outflow at the end. We're going to see how that plays in a second. The other investment, Alpha, is a perpetual investment, meaning you're going to invest $650,000 right now, but receive $68,540 per year forever. So the first thing I'll do is write out my uh, cash flows, kind of in a table so it's easier to see. Uh, so I'll make a little table here for omega, throw out time, zero, one, two, and three. The cash flows are negative 500,000. Then we're going to gain 150,000 gain 200,000 and in year three, because we've got an inflow of 350, but we also have an outflow of 50, the net cash flow would be positive 300,000. Now you can solve the net present value on your financial calculator, or you can just do it using basic uh, present value formulas. So I'll show both. First, if I wanted to find the net present value, remember that the net present value is just the present value of your inflows minus the present value of your outflows. So my inflows are $150,000 in one year and the required rate of return or the cost of capital is 10%. So I know that I can discount this at 10% for one year. I'll do the same for the next one. 10% for two years and the last one. Ten percent for three years, minus the initial investment of five hundred thousand. So you should end up with a net present value of just over twenty-seven thousand, uh, twenty-seven thousand forty-seven dollars and thirty-three cents to be exact. Now let's move on to the perpetual project, which is a little bit simpler. For alpha, because it's perpetual, you're still going to follow the same formula, but the present value of the inflows is a lot quicker to do. Since you're going to be receiving sixty-eight thousand five hundred forty. Perpetually, we could just divide this by your required rate of return or your discount rate, whatever you want to call it. I'm using the basic perpetual formula. That'll give me the present value of my inflows minus 650,000, which is my outflow. So then in present value here, so you'd end up with a net present value of 35,400. For those of you that prefer to use the financial calculator for Finding the net present value, for instance, you could also have done that for the Omega project. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Um, you want to just enter your cash flows in order. So the first cash flow was negative 500,000. So I'll put 500,000 negative. I'll save that. And then 150,000. So I, I scroll down 150,000, enter. Frequency is one, 200,000. Enter. Frequency is one, 300,000. Enter. And if you had more cash flows, you would just enter all of them uh, in order. So then you just press net present value, enter your discount rate of 10, save that, down, compute, and you would end up with the same result. Now you can't really do the net present value of a perpetual investment using the calculator. Well, there is a slight workaround. Like you can, for example, you know, if we're going to clear our cash flows. Right, six hundred and fifty thousand dollars as your initial, sixty-eight thousand five forty as your cash flow, and put a frequency of say, you know, nine 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 nine, for example. The idea here is you want to make the calculator think that you know you're getting essentially uh, an infinite number of payments. So if I go to NPV now, press ten as my rate, you'll get thirty-five thousand four hundred. So in theory, you can't do it, 
but technically you can trick the calculator and get the calculator to do uh, perpetual calculation just by setting your frequency to you know as, as high a number as you can. For the internal rate of return, you'll take your financial calculator and uh, plug in the cash flow. So we'll start cash flow. First one is negative 500,000, enter, down. 150,000 in the first year, enter, down, down. 200,000, and then 300,000. IRR compute. So you'd end up with an internal rate of return for the first project, the Omega project of 12.71. For the Alpha project, given that it's perpetual, the correct way to do it would be to use the formula. So for Alpha, what I would do, what you should do, take your payment, which is 68,540, divide it by the discount rate, but this time we're gonna set the discount rate as an unknown, because that's what we're solving for. Subtract the initial cash flow and set that equal to zero. 68,540 over X minus 650,000 equals zero. We're setting it to zero because if the net present value is zero, we know that the discount rate is the internal rate of return. And then you can just solve this algebraically. You should get 10 point, uh, roughly 55, 10.55%. So that would be the internal rate of return of alpha. For the discounted payback period, so for each one of these payments, what you'll see me do next is discount each one back the appropriate number of years to bring it back to time zero at a 10% discount rate. Now that I have my discounted values, I can add them up and see at what point or how many were needed to get back my initial 500,000. So at this point, you can see that after two years, we're still negative 198,350. But the following year's cash flow has a present value of 225, which means it'll be enough to bring us back to zero and beyond. So the discounted payback period is two years, because we need the first two years in full, plus a fraction of the third year. And that fraction is what we're missing, 198,350.11, divided by what we're expecting, which is 225, 394.44. So you get a payback period of 2.88 years. Now for Project Alpha, a little bit different because you have this perpetual nature of the investment, which means you're going to be getting paid forever. So the way to figure out the discounted payback period for this uh, project is to solve it as an annuity. Meaning, you know that you want the present value to equal 650,000, which is the initial investment. And what you're looking for is N. You're saying, okay, well, how many years, N, would it take for the present value of the payments to equal the initial investment, for the present value of the $68,540 per year to equal $650,000. So you're setting your payments to $68,540. Your rate, so IY in your financial calculator or just the discount rate if you're using a formula, would be 10. And you're computing for n. Now, for those of you that um, are going to enter a future value, you want to make sure that your future value is entered as zero before you can compute n. So it would take 31.09 years for this project to pay back the initial investment. Here we've asked you to find the crossover rate for the two projects. And for this, you'll be needing your financial calculator as well. This one's a little bit tricky because, again, you have to trick the calculator into solving something that technically it shouldn't be able to do, and that is something perpetual. Let's find the crossover rate. Remember, you're trying to find the point where the two have the same net present value. So what I would start by doing is writing out a comparative table. So I've got year 0, 1, 2, 3. Omega has an initial investment of 500000 while alpha has an initial investment of 650,000. To find the crossover rate, you want to take the uh, difference. So we're gonna make a new column here. We'll just call it uh, omega minus alpha. So that'll be negative 500,000 minus negative 650,000, which is actually positive 150. Then we'll enter the cash flows for omega 
well into the cast rules for alpha and we'll do that all the way till year six and beyond. Technically this can go on to infinity, but we don't need to do that. Now at this point, omega will run out of cash flows. So what do we do? Just set it to zero and continue this process. You don't need to show it three more times. You really only need to show it once more for yourself to see that that'll be the remaining cash flow uh, to infinity. So omega would have zero from this point on to infinity. But alpha would continue to have its payments of 68,540 to infinity. So the difference now would be negative 68,540 to infinity. So how we're going to enter that into the calculator is we're going to tell the calculator that this has a frequency of 9999. So next you'll see me open my financial calculator and enter my cash flows and I'm going to be using the uh, differential column. I'll be entering those into the cash flow and solving for the internal rate of return of that column and that'll be my crossover rate. Now I've entered the cash flows, I'm going to press IRR, compute. So we get a crossover rate of 10.146%. The next question we've asked you, which project should be invested in if the firm's cost of capital was 13%? The correct answer to this question is none. Because if the cost of capital exceeds the internal rate of return of each project, that means that neither one of these projects would be profitable at this rate. In this last question, we've asked you to find the equivalent annual NPV for each of these projects. Now this can be done on your financial calculator. It can also be done uh, using formulas. So I will show both. First, for the uh, Omega project, which was uh, this uh, finite three-year investment, we're asking you to convert the net present value into an annuity, right? That's what an equivalent annual net present value is, is taking your present value, turning it into a, uh, an annual payment. So if you were to do this with the annuity formula, you would set your present value to 27,047 and 33, and you'd be solving for the payment. So I'm gonna set that as my variable. My rate is 10%. It's a three year investment divided by my rate. On the financial calculator, you would set your present value to negative 27,047 33. Everything else would be the same. The n would be 3, the uh, rate would be 10, you have no future value, and you'd be computing once again for the PMT. Regardless of which route you took, you should have ended up at the same place. $10,876.13 is your annual net present value. For Project Alpha, since it is a perpetual investment, we're going to do this using the perpetuity formula. We want to take the present value, 35400 and convert it to a payment. So we would set the present value to 35,400. We're solving for payment and our rate is 10%. So we just by cross multiplying, we'd end up with 3540, $3,540 is the equivalent annual net present value. So we can see that the first project is much, much better on an annual basis. That's because it would take you only three years to complete that project, whereas this project would take essentially forever. So that's it for this video. If you did find it helpful, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.